first thing I like to do is change the profile of my photo. I usually go with Adobe Portrait. The reason for this is because I love how it takes away some of the saturation from the image and it renders beautiful skin tones. My style of photography tends to be a little bit cooler. I tend to um, gravitate more towards the blue. So I am going to trust Lightroom to change the white balance for me and immediately I can see how the scene is changing. So this is a great starting point already. The second thing I like to do is I like to underexpose my images. I usually do this in camera and in Lightroom. I think this is a good starting point for now. Most of the adjustments that I'm going to do here are going to be done in the tone curve. For the texture, I never use this slider because I feel like when you add some texture, it becomes like very HDR and I'm not really in that mood. I'd rather to be like more soft, more dreamy, have that film look. So I never touch the texture. So for the clarity, since I always feel like cinematic shots are not very sharp, I like to slide the clarity to the left a little bit. So I am going to move this. One of my favorite tools in Lightroom is the dehaze feature as it makes my photos look very dreamy and soft as well. When you combine the clarity and dehaze, the way it changes the photo is just beautiful. Let's look at the before and after. So far I see it doesn't have a lot of saturation, it's flat, the highlights are pulled down. I think it's looking good, so I'm gonna continue. So I never use the vibrance and saturation. This is just like my personal style. Um, if I ever feel the need to use the vibrance and saturation, I'll make sure to go back and adjust it. But for now, I am not gonna touch that since I like what I'm seeing and, and everything is working out as it should. So for now, I am going to move to the tone curve. The tone curve is one of the most powerful tools in Lightroom because it gives you layered controls. It might seem a little bit intimidating at first when you don't know what it does, how it works, but once you learn how to use it and how everything works together, you're going to see how much you can do to an image. There are no rules to what a tone curve should look like, but most people use the S curve. I like to start by adding some anchor points to my tone curve. I usually add four like this, and then I want I add one in the middle here. I like to give my photos a little bit of a faded look, and this is exactly how I achieve this look. You immediately see how everything on the photo changes, especially in the faded areas. I am very focused, as you can tell. This is how I work. <laughs> Then for the mid-tones, I am going to bring them up a little bit. You can see how it starts to change, especially in the face. You can see more details, so that's what I want. So I am going to leave this one like that. Then my whites, I am going to probably lift them up. Like that. And I am going to drop my highlights because that helps give the look of that cinematic feel. Okay, so again, before and after. Okay, it's looking great so far. So now we're going to move to the red. This was a great update from Lightroom because before you couldn't see what colors you were changing the tone curve. So now you can see that if you move the, if I add an anchor point here and I lift them up, I am going to add some reds if I move them down you're gonna add some greens. I really like that I can see now the values and the, the colors. And you can immediately see how the highlights are turning green. It's closer to the look that I'm looking for. So this is looking great. So now that I'm happy with the tint, I am going to move to the blues. So now once I have my anchor points, I am going to start moving them around. I am going to add a little bit of fade in the shadows. And you immediately see how the blues take over and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to bring them up a little bit. I'm gonna leave that there, perfect. The crazy thing about this is that I've only been touching the tone curves and the basic adjustments. I haven't even touched the color grading tool or the HSL panel. 
being able to understand the, the tone curve is gonna take your image to a completely different level. I am not gonna do the HSL panel yet. I try to leave this to the after I do the color grading. The reason for this is because I use the HSL panel just for very minor adjustments, especially because I, if I wanna change the reds or the blues and be very specific, then I go to the HSL panel. So I'm going to skip that one. Once you click it, each one, you can get a more detailed and more precise edit. This is where the fun begins. For this one, I like to move the hue slider all the way to the blue side, since I like my photos on the cooler side. And now I am going to increase the saturation. I try to be very subtle with my movements and see what it does. Once I'm done adjusting the shadows, midtones, and highlights, that's where I go down to the blending and balance. Blending pretty much determines how the tonal ranges blend together. And the balance determines how each tonal range is defined. So I, with pretty much what I do, I just move them side by side to see what is changing and what look I want. So for this one, I am going to move probably to the right because you see where my green tints are starting to show and I want them to be there. So this is where the blending comes in. I like the greens, that's perfect. So now the balance, the same thing for the balance. Move it left and right to see what is changing. So for the balance, I am going to probably do just a bit. Okay, I like how it's looking. Let's do the before and after one more time. Very happy with the look and feel I have my green tints. I have the blues and the shadows, the mid-tones look like my style. So after I'm done with the HSL color panel, I am going to move down to the vignetting. I think the vignetting is, is also another favorite of mine because it adds like more drama to the photos. Especially when I have a subject in focus, I use the vignetting to make the subject pop. So I think it's important to use it here. You're gonna see how it affects it. So pretty much I go down to the highlight priority and I do the amount and I put the slider to the left and immediately I see how it's changing. The corners are darker, it's moodier, and that's the look that I want. The last thing I'm going to do, I see that the game right here, it's a very important part of this image. So I want to make sure that this pops, that immediately you look at them and you look at the game. So to do this, I am going to use a masking for this. So I click the little brush here and I am going to make sure I paint the little board game. This is when I wanna make very specific changes to an image. This is where I use the brush tool. Once I'm done painting over and I go back here to the basic adjustment and I am going to shift the slider to the left. So I like how the blues now match, especially the blues here matches coat, the hat, the jeans, Overall, looking at the image, this is exactly what I, you know, what the look that I go for to, you know, to bring my photos to life and, you know, I, it feels very cinematic to me. So the last thing that I would do for this is go back to the cropping, especially because when you're looking at a movie, you know, sometimes it's like 16 by 9 and it feels very cinematic. We can do the before, that's how it was. It was very warm, like I said before, and that's not the look that I, that I want in my photos. So we use everything available in Lightroom. We use the basic adjustments. We use the tone curve. We use the HSL panel, the color grading tool. And you see how easy it is to achieve a very cinematic look. So now, once I'm done with the image, before and after, making sure that I love everything, that nothing has to be changed, I pretty much you know, let this photo go. And sometimes, most times, if I really like the look of the image, I can save it as a preset and use it for future reference. It is l 